Okay, so start over again. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. So where are they bearing record or witness? In heaven. In heaven, that's right. How many of them are bearing witness? Three. Or bearing record? Three. Three, where? In heaven. In heaven, okay. There are three that bear record in heaven. Go ahead. The Father. The Father, which is the Most High, or Yahweh. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Word. The Word, which is Hamashiach Yahawashai, or Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And these three are one. And notice it says, and these three are one. So the three are one, meaning what? Not only one in agreement, because they agree together, but this has to be talking about because they're bearing witness in the heavenly realm, they're one in spirit. Three persons that make up one spirit, okay? The three in one, the one in three. In history, they called it the Trinity, okay? In the Bible, they called it, they call it the Godhead. This is the Godhead right here. The Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. What are they one in? In nature, in substance, and in essence. It's the same Spirit in three persons. Now, go to the other scripture. So this scripture right here proves that if they're all one, meaning that it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? I think it was Acts. Um, it was Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. And the reason I'm going here is to prove that the Holy Spirit is not a feminine spirit, but the Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit. You got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The three are one in essence, in that spirit, in nature, and in substance, and the one is three in persons. Three persons, one spirit. Okay, go ahead. Where you at? Acts chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. That's what we're going to go to. Okay, so, so we got to bring out this first. First of all, the Holy Spirit is God. God the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now let's go to Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Go ahead. But, a, oh, but Peter said, Ananias, mm -hmm. why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Right. He said, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, meaning to the Holy Spirit? Because he kept back part of the money. He said he, Ananias had sold, sold, um, sold a possession that he had for so much, but he kept back part of the money, and he told Peter he had so much, which really he had more. So Peter told him, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And that's what he's doing. He's lying to the Holy Spirit, saying that the Holy Spirit is feminine. He's lying to the Most High. He's lying to Christ. He's lying to Israel, and he's lying to the Gentiles, the nations. Okay, he's just a liar all around. Okay, go ahead. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Right, go ahead. While it remained, was it not thine own? Was it not thine own? While it remained, wasn't it your own? Wasn't it your hand when you sold it? Go ahead. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Yeah, the money was in your own power. You could do whatever you want to do with it. Go ahead. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Go ahead. Thou hast not lied unto men. Thou hast not lied unto men. Now check this out. First he said he lied to the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. Then he said, you haven't lied unto men, but you lied unto who? God. You are lied unto the God. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is God, meaning God the Holy Spirit. That's who he lied to. So let's establish that right now, that the Father is God, Yahweh Shai is God, Jesus Christ is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. Okay? So... Once we establish that the Holy Spirit of God is God and is of God, sent by the Most High and His Son, 
Now, let's go into his doctrine. Okay? Let's go into his doctrine. It's not male at all. That's something that the Romans did because they were dealing with uh, high-level homosexuality. So what they did was when they infiltrated the church, they changed the Holy Spirit from a she to a he. Okay, to uphold their three deities that they were following in ancient Rome. Zeus, Jupiter, and, uh, and Pluto, which is the same, or, uh, no, no, sorry, Poseidon, which is the same as Neptune. Okay, we're going to stop it right there because he said the Romans changed the Holy Spirit from a, a she to a he. Let's go to the concordance. Okay. Let's go go to the concordance. Put the Bible down, Jeremiah. Okay. And what we go do is go to the concordance and you go turn to page. We go go to page. Let's see right here. Go to page 13, no, 7307. And let's get the definition of spirit, which is in the Hebrew, uh, which they have in here in the concordance, they spell it ruach. But in the original Hebrew, is racha, racha. Okay. So we're going to go to 73, no, 7307 in the Hebrew. So you say Greek, yeah. didn't say Hebrew. Okay. So let's go to number 7307. Okay, go ahead, get it while I'm talking, okay? Now let's see according to um, according to the strong concordance, is it feminine, is it masculine, or is it neuter? Okay? Let me see. Let's go into this right quick. Okay, this is 7307. That's the word for spirit. It has ruach, which is raka, really. It says, a primitive root properly to blow, therefore breathe, only breathe. And it says, only literally to smell or by implication perceive, figuratively to anticipate, enjoy, accept, smell, touch. Uh, make of a quick understanding. No, that's the, that was the wrong one, but that relates to it. But let's go to 7307. Uh, it says, Ruach, which is Rakha from 7306. That's what I just read. It says, Wind, by resemblance, breathes, i.e., therefore, a sensible or even violent exhal exhalation. Exhalation. Figuratively, life, anger, unsubstantial, uh, unsubstantial, uh, unsubstantial, um, unsubstantiality. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me get that. <laughs> okay, it says, by extension, a region of the sky, by resemblance, spirit, but only of a rational being including its expression and functions, air, anger, blast, breath, cool, courage, mind, quarter, side, spirit, um, tempest, vein, wind. Okay, so you see this definition out the Strong's. In the Hebrew, it has nothing to do with gender because they're going in according to the scriptures and trying to go into the essence of the Holy Spirit. And so now go to the next one, which is in the New Testament. You know, in the New Testament. I'm going to tell you where to go. Go in the Greek. Go in the Greek. So that definition of raka has nothing to do with gender. Because what they're doing is going into the essence and nature of the Spirit, which has nothing to do with feminine or masculine. You're going to 4151. Okay. Okay. 4151. That's what you're going into. 4151. Yeah. Go into that right there. Okay, 4151. 
Okay, 4151 in the New Testament, you have right here is 4151 Numa. Okay, and then it says from 4154. So let's go to 4154, and it's Newell, Neil, Newell. Okay, a primary word to breathe hard, to breathe hard. Therefore, breeze, blow, um, comparatively with 5594. So let's go back up to 4151. It says, Numa, a current of air, therefore, breathe, blast, or a breeze. By analogy or figuratively, a spirit, i.e., therefore, human, the rational soul, by implication, vital principle, vital principle, meant disposition, etc., or superhuman, an angel, demon, or divine, God, Christ, Christ Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Ghost, life, spirit, usually mind, and COMP compared to 5590. Okay, so do you see um, any gender to that? And that's out the strong concordance. Okay, we just read the definition out of the strong concordance. Okay, in the Old Testament, which is Raka, and the New Testament, which is Numa which is the Greek, which has no gender at all. It doesn't describe any gender at all. And so let's go to the next one.